it's repair time again. There's a Hilux turned up. This thing's a pretty, pretty tidy old Hilux. And the man's going to go cut some firewood for us. Uh, it has a problem. We, we're not actually sure what the problem is yet. But looking around, we've got some coils. They've been changed. Um, I believe... Can you describe the problem? Uh, well, it's coughing and spluttering. Coughing and spluttering? Uh, yeah, you wouldn't have known they had an issue on based on the drive over um, once it got a bit warmer. But um, it's, yeah, it's just coughing and spluttering and losing power and... Four mechanics haven't been able to sort it out, so I've heard you're the man. So he's here. So we have got uh, an early Gen 1 engine. Airflow meter is early. But this is interesting. Igniters have to be earthed. So if they could wiggle around, that could cause problems. Here is some form there. Here is some form in there. Oh, but it hasn't got the ECU I was expecting. Put your eye out, mate. Yeah, I want that. I'm bit, hmm, we're going to have to get that ECU out so I can have a look at it. Yeah. Oh, have we got a, like a really early crown ECU? 431. It's actually a really early crown. Oh, it's got a hole in it. Yeah, oops. Okay, find a bunk for that. Sort that probably. Sort this. These. Um, I've actually got these plugs. This is a... This is not the igniter I was expecting. That. Unplug those igniters and see if it actually plugs in properly, Jace. Um, the headers, I wonder what they are actually off, because they're cast iron. They're either a VVTI or a high ace van. And someone did a lovely job welding flanges onto those cast iron headers. No, they have done a nice job. It's, it's really strange to see that. There's oil and crap all over your clutch slave. I think it's probably dropping down from up above. And your clutch is wrong. Can you go put your foot on the clutch? Yeah, let it off. It's bottomed out. So the clutch, the push rod's actually bottomed out on the slave cylinder. Okay. Great thing about these um, solid front ends, you can fit quite wide headers in them, which you can't in some other models. Okay. The, when they lined up the, um, the flange though, they, they failed on the oxygen sensor, which is a bit of a problem. Looks alright though. Yeah, I think it looks really I really love it, but I'm just sort of at the stage where, like, I bought it for nine grand, um, and it's cost me a few more than that, which I sort of expected. But I'm just worried that I'm going to keep pouring money into it for it sort of not to be worth it. And um, so, is driving it worth it? Yeah, is I it really fun to drive? That. Yeah, it is. Yeah, and that, I, that's where the value is. It runs things like yeah, that's true. Do they actually unplug? Are they pushed? Are they forced on? Uh, that one was like wiggle off with a screwdriver. Do you want them to or? Well, we want to earth properly. We want them properly, properly strongly earthed. And it looks like it's done damage and they're flopping around. I know. We're going to have to check that clutch too, Jace. Mm, it's been flopping, eh? Sort of. There you go. I don't know. The, the, the plugs don't line up with what I'd expect for a crown. ECU. I should be able to tell it back. Ah, uh, yeah, right. Turn it over. Yeah. Crown. Yes, that's crown. There. That's crown plugs. Four cam 32 there. Toyota there. And that plug's different. 
and that that grommet's been changed. It's not that those plugs are sore. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit of a crossbreed because if it was crown. That manifold would be different and that would be different, but then, you know, songs get swapped around. Um, and that plug there, that one at the back there, I'll find a saw loom, eh? I reckon that's our telltale there. With that, with that done, should we check some fuel flow just in case before we test drive? It's right there. Look, you have to undo one hose clamp, put it into a container. Uh, it's not bad. Oh, and hear that? Hear the stepper work after it's turned off? Perfect. That's the suggestion that it's wired correctly. Okay. You can hear the stepper go afterwards. Better than not wired correctly. Well, it's an indication that it's wired correctly. In that, that, in that part of the, the wiring. But the structure of the wiring under the dash actually looks reasonable. Like okay. the way it's set out looks like someone knew what they were doing. Okay. Oh, see if I can find a container for you, AJs. Yeah. Hit start. Okay. We're going to time it for 30 seconds. Okay. And after 30 seconds, turn it off. And after 30 seconds, just turn the key off. Okay. And Jason's going to stand there with a hand on the jug and we watch right, the ready? petrol. Yeah, mate. Yep. That looks pretty good. I don't think we've got a problem there, eh? That's, that's cranking along. That's good. One, one, and, one and a quarter, two and a half, two and a half per minute times 60, lots, 150 litres an hour. Plenty of fuel pump. No problems there. That's yeah, not so our issue. actually changed that, that fuel filter. Are you changed the fuel filter? Yeah. Well, that's working fine. Okay. Do we have the magical taco that is way out? It's a little bit bouncy, Jase. Just a little bit. How much free playing you steering? All of it. <laughs> and then a little bit extra, just for good measure. One thing, I can't hear the bearing at the moment, the, the release bearing. Because yeah, the, the exhaust drowns it out. Yep, they fixed it. Right, are we going for it? Up
the stitting? This one you know, this one Mark was. Brave man leaving his chainsaw with us, eh? You never leave a chainsaw with anyone, never lend a chainsaw. You go down that track there, and then at the first corner you turn left. At the next trig, which is like 35 40 minutes away, turn left again into the bush, and you end up at the farm. Off you go. It's only like an hour and a half. I've got a rattle. Is it a fuel pump? Yeah. Oh, no, there we go. So it's got a primer pump. And an external pump up on the chassis here. We, we are actually going to use the suggested speed for these corners. Yep, you can actually go around that corner at the suggested speed and it feels okay. I definitely don't want to go around that at 100 like I do in my, my own car. Uh, yeah, can we climb? It's actually climbing up here, right? So the steering is definitely um, just a sort of a guideline. And brakes, as Jason um, said, they're just a suggestion. If you want to slow down, you suggest the truck might slow down and you cross your fingers a little bit. It's quite comfortable about 80 k's an hour. It actually drives really nice. And it would be a, a good, good wagon for a, a weekend bush truck drive to where you're going, good hunting truck. I think if you were doing long trips on the open road, you'd be pretty tired when you got it wherever you were going. What is, what is this? Yeah, that's like an exhaust. Jason, there's an exhaust on our road. I know. I mean, Jason, there's an exhaust here. Why is there an exhaust? I don't know, it's getting a white fella exhausted. <laughs> Put it on the back, we've got a flat deck. Um, the handbrake's only a suggestion too. <laughs> oh, you have to pull it out quite a lot way. Oh, we're good. Um, uh, uh. Yeah, it doesn't look very good. I didn't notice it getting noisier. No one. Ah, it's because we've, we've just cruised out of here. What do you think? We found, when we're driving back, you know, we're coming down the, down the road, right? Mm -hmm. And there was an exhaust floor sorting on the track. Really? Yeah. And we'd not long left where we putted up the gravel road and when we came back there was an exhaust on the track. So there's a chance your exhaust fell off. No way. In the back section. <laughs> no, that, that that's definitely an exhaust. What the hell? As we're it's driving up the track. Well, I don't know who else's it would be. What the fuck? There's not many people who drive down You know, road. like it's not like a common road, man. <laughs> I looked at that before you guys left and oh it was, my god it was resting on here oh see, yeah see that how it's worn it was resting on there oh yeah what in the, and i thought oh yeah that's normal yeah that that fell off yeah oh, the inside shit well i'm glad <laughs> i'm glad it was there and not on the road yeah yeah like um five minutes before i pulled up yep i thought you were taking a piss <laughs> <laughs> i don't like 
it was it was all going to fall apart wasn't it yeah yeah it doesn't look real good and it's been smacking here that's where it's been sitting on that u-bolt okay it's only an exhaust it's actually random <laughs> yeah, i mean like i should have probably should have recorded it when i was filming it eh? because i bet i'll get down the road and i'll start filming how it. how intermittent was it well it's like going blah 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 blah, blah and losing a lot of power and and how often would it do that? Well, See, that's like, what's it going to do? It's blah, 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 blah. I, I didn't have that as a... Yeah, sorry, my explanation is probably not very... So that was a good I'm explanation. Especially going up um, hills and stuff. But cool. It seems like sometimes it'll run all right, and then, like, I couldn't believe that it was running as good as gold on the way up here. Um, well, go off, Jace, go for a drive. Yeah. Do the same trip. Do the same trip. Off you go. Have fun. I just worry I'm going to get back to Telpo and... Absolutely. Yeah, it's going to start hiccuping again. Yeah, it's hard. You know, I could spend all day testing stuff and I could throw hundreds of dollars worth of parts at it. Yeah. And not find it. Yeah, that's right. And it, it might be right under our nose, but because it's not faulting, yeah. the igniters weird. were definitely loose. Yeah, okay. and And that bracket fell away yeah. when Jason took it off. Yeah, so that wouldn't have been good. So that could definitely cause a problem. And when you're bouncing, because it's bouncy, it could have caused issues. Yeah. Um, um, we just don't know. Yeah, I've got how you. How hard uh, is it to look at the distributor? The distributor's here. Um, distributor <laughs> caps are in here. I sell a lot of distributor caps, okay? Yeah. And I sell a lot of rotors. Um, but they generally, when they stuff out, they're fairly consistent in their fault. Okay? okay. So distributors are under here. So these covers come off, yeah. and the distributor caps are in there. If you want some put on as mate, we can do it. Um, how, how? It's not a hard job, it just takes time. So we're just going to take these clubs off, drop this belt off, and squeeze into these bolts in here. Okay. And these ones in here, and then it comes out. Yeah. It's not too bad, it's just yeah. time, and it's tight in the highlights. Yeah. To you. Yeah. And where it's located under the radio, it's going to get hot because there's also heat coming up from the tunnel. Yeah. The rust mark is interesting. I failed one of these the other day. Didn't have a check light. It ran the engine, but no check light. I happen to have a spare one right there. That one starts an engine and works, but it's been sitting for a long time. Sorry, because I said the rust thing. No, thumb. Um, it, it is a mix, mix and match your engine. Okay. So, okay, this that is a Crown ECU. See here? This is a Crown engine. Yep. 4 cam 32 on there, and Toyota on the spark plug cover. Different to yours. The wiring through here is different. So the wiring is not a Crown wiring loop. It's different. This is the same. Or similar. Nah, but it's different because the plug coming up for the for the starter is different. So that that's crown, that's matching set. Yours is definitely not matching. Oh, no, so that won't help. Well, it's wired up reasonably well, and it'll still do the same stuff. Sensors are still the same, timing's still the same. Okay. Injectors, I haven't checked injector size. The injectors were recently done by a bloke over in Hawke's Bay. Okay. Because um, my friend he put a starter motor in for me, and he said the seals were all perished. And oh, good. Um, he actually watched one of your videos. Oh, good. Yeah. Excellent. Watch yeah. the video. Know how to do it. We should actually check whether the, the, the purple ones. Can you pop the bonnet and see if the injectors are purple? Had a little crack in it too. Jay fixed that. Oh, he did? It's a new one. One of the early things he fixed. Yes, they're a purple injector. So they are the right injector for the engine. You can just see down in here the a purple, not a like a dark blue. So good seals. Did it make a difference when I had seals done? Absolutely. Yep. Yeah, because they get hard and cracked. Yeah. But it was the same sort of thing. It was intermittently running like dog shit, and then I took it into the mechanic, and he's like, "Oh, it's running. All, it's nothing wrong with it, mate." And I was like, "Please change the injectors because my mate said they're done." And then he finally looked, and yeah. <laughs> It looks okay, doesn't it? 
It doesn't smell funny. It doesn't smell funky. Apart from the fact that it's old and it really could do with a service, I, I, don't, I can't condemn it as a fault at this point in time. Okay, so in your ECU, okay, with age, these fellas, your caps, there, there, and these ones, there's another one, they get a bit tired and they'll yeah. leak out the bottom, there, in here, does that one look at all suspicious, that one in there? Can't really see it nicely, eh? Yeah, looks right. They weren't like really, really prone to failing, but they're old. And any electronic component when they get up yeah. can give issues. So a service is a really, really good idea. Mm -hmm. Okay, really, really good idea for all of them, just as a maintenance point of view. But when you're trying to find a fault like this, again, it may not be the fault. Yeah.